Hi, Cheris Booker here. Today I'm excited to show you the latest innovation in the 360 Works suite of products, 360 Deploy. The purpose of 360 Deploy is to solve the age-old problem of how do we make our development changes on one FileMaker database and merge it with the live production database that's hosted for the client on another FileMaker server. In our example today, we have our development server file on the left. This is simply an inventory database hosted on Jupyter, which is one of our Amazon servers that we have here at 360 Works. This file is where we'll be making all of our changes in this demonstration. You can see that there are three records in our development database, and of course that our next serial number on our item reference code is 4. On the right, we have our production database. We have nine records here, and of course the next serial number is 10. Now I mentioned the serial numbers because 360 Deploy automatically stores serial numbers from the production file and uses the set next field script step to set them. Now everything looks the same at the moment because we have not begun our development changes on the development database on the left. So let's make some development changes on this file. In this example, we'll go in and change the theme of our solution to luminous and we'll add a few fields. And now we can see that we can add anything we want, whether it be relationships, tables, or scripts, or fields. The idea in this example is to show that we have made all of our development changes we tested this development version and now it is ready to go live for our users. Of course, the big question here is how do we push it live and how do we push all of the data from our production server? Currently, as a FileMaker developer, we have the option of taking the data out of the old file and importing the data into the new file and adjusting serial numbers. Of course, in some cases, this can be a lengthy or risky process especially for vertical market solution providers who may have to design a very long process to make the deployment simple for their customers to be able to access their solutions. So let's take a look at how 360 Deploy automates and simplifies the deployment process with just the click of a button. We'll start with demonstrating the simple installation and setup. You should install the 360 Deploy application on each server. We've already done that in this example. But just keep in mind that it's installed on both the production server and the deployment server where the files are hosted. This server application is needed to handle server-side file manipulation during the deployment process. During this live deployment, we will be downloading, uploading, moving, renaming, closing, and opening files on FileMaker server, none of which you can remotely do through API calls. Essentially, we are putting our own application on the server to handle the job for us. Now this is the part that typically is a long task to do on your own, so 360 Deploy takes care of the work for you. So far, we made our development changes and installed our application on both servers, so it's time for the simple setup. 360 Deploy does install a plugin and it gets installed on the machine where we are doing our deployment. We don't need the plugin on our servers or users' machines. Now this plugin is automatically installed using the install plugin script step here, so you don't need to manually install it. It gets installed when we open our 360 Deploy interface file. First, we need to identify our development and production server as we begin our setup. Now the first thing we recommend in the setup is that you create an account in this database with the same username and password as another account in our production database. We want to make sure whichever account we use has full access. We will now create another account in this file with the same password so it skips all the password prompts. The goal here is to make everything as simple as possible so you can press one button and deploy. Our second step is to choose which databases to sync. If we click the Choose button, we get a list of all of our database names and we'll click our Inventory Database. I'll mention here that 360 Deploy does support multiple file solutions, so I could click on multiple files here, but of course we are only using one database in this example. Step 3 is the copy and paste operation that we paste into our development file. All the changes we make with 360 Deploy will only be made in our development file. We do not need to make any changes to our production file whatsoever, which makes things very simple if I'm a vertical market provider with hundreds of applications on a production server. In our script workspace, we paste our script from the clipboard, and now we will have two scripts here. The first one is entitled 360 Deploy Metadata Fetcher. It is a generic script it gathers all of our fields, tables, and serial numbers. 
The second script we have here is a bit more interesting. This is our 360 deploy import worker. But in order to see the script in action, we will need to go back to the 360 deploy setup interface file. Back in the interface file, we'll move to step four, which is to copy the script steps. All of our custom scripts have been generated and we are ready to paste these into the 360 deploy import worker script. Now, this script is customized for this solution. It knows all of our tables, serial numbers, and it wrote our import script for us. This completes the setup process. All that's left to do is run the deployment with the click of one button. We have our development database and we will go ahead and close it. We have our production database over here. We'll close that one as well. We do need to close the files for the process to run. Now there's a big green button that we'll click to deploy. And now starts the actual deployment process. It will now download an empty clone of the database from the development server, upload that clone to the production server, import all of the data from the old production file to the new empty clone, close the old production database and move it to an archive timestamp folder, rename the empty clone to correct the old name, and open it back up. And once that's done, we are completely ready to go. It has handled the entire process for us completely hands-free. You can even let the import run overnight. Now let's take a look at the completed results. We'll go ahead and open up our live production database. And once that's open, we can see that all of our programmatic changes and the data have been imported. So we'll take a look here. We can see our added field. We can look at our item reference code and see that our serial number has increased. And there you have it, an automated, simplified process of rolling out updated database versions to a live FileMaker database. As a final feature, I also would like to point out that 360 Deploy has a very easy rollback process. If you mess up, need a change, or maybe had a problem, 360 Deploy is worry-free. Before each import, 360 Deploy creates a time-stamped folder in the FileMaker server documents directory. It moves all of your production files there. All files in FileMaker server's documents directory can be put back easily from a previous version. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy your painless rollouts using 360 Deploy from 360 Works.